Well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Erin Christensen and I manage employer relations for the Block Career Center. And today I'll be talking to you and, um, and I have Abby Johnson here from EY and I'll let her introduce herself um, here in a minute. But we'll be talking to you a little bit about virtual interviewing and tips and tricks that you can utilize um, as we're kind of moving along in this, um, in this world of virtual interviewing and identifying and selecting potential um, full-time and internship offers. So Abby, would you like to go ahead and um, introduce yourself and talk to us a little bit about your background and what you do with EY? Yeah, um, so like Aaron said, my name is Abby Johnson. I'm a campus recruiter for Ernst & Young um, out of our Kansas City office. Um, I joined EY, you know, we're an accounting firm, a professional services firm. I joined in 2015, did a was a staff in tax uh, for two years before I became a campus recruiter. So now my role is to manage headcount um, for the Kansas City office um, in terms of campus hires. So I handle all our internship and write off campus um, staff hiring uh, for the Kansas City office. So I do a lot of events um, on different campuses um, around Kansas, around Missouri, and also um, set up our internship program and things like that. And we've been doing interviewing for a couple of years now. So I was glad Aaron asked me to help yeah. present. Yeah, well, great. Thank you, Abby. Um, like you said, I know that EY has been utilizing virtual interviewing for a while now, at least for that first round of interviews. Um, so can you talk to us about what makes candidates in general stand out um, when virtual when doing virtual interviews? Yeah, and it's funny when I when we I thought about this question the first time I was like, I think people are gonna be a little disappointed because there is truly no, you know, secret sauce, like, you know, one tip that's really gonna make you stand out in a in a virtual interview. Mm -hmm. And the thing really make you stand out in a virtual interview are the things that make you stand out in a normal in-person on campus or in office interview. It's really just being able to clearly and concisely you know, talk about examples of um, things you've done or things you've learned and how those um, can benefit the firm or would make you a good candidate for the job you're applying for. Um, so being you know calm and um, confident, just like you would be in an in-person interview, virtually that translates as well. Um, and then again, just the content of your responses is really what the firms are evaluating. So, you know, whether or not you have a bad internet connection or your, you know, dog barks in the background, right? That is not going to put you, you know, in a bad spot from the interview. And it's really all going to be focused on the content of your responses. So hopefully that's kind of heartening to you to hear um, as students going through the virtual interview processes, especially if you're new to them or doing a virtual interview. Um, just to know that you know what makes you stand out virtually is what makes you stand out in person as well same thing yeah yeah no that's great thank you abby and i think it's a good reassurance to students that you know it's just the same as if you were interviewing in person you're just doing it with a camera and probably at your home than if you were in the office um and one thing and I, you mentioned it kind of with the dog coming, like you can hear the dog barking or there might be a bad connection. We were just talking about this in the office about how that almost humanizes people as well. So yeah. even like if, if I was, if I was interviewing with you and um, you know, your pet walked in or whatever, it just, I think it almost makes it a little bit more comfortable that you are, yeah. you know, then if you're just in a suit in an office somewhere, um, I think it, it's just, like I said, it humanizes people more. And would you agree with that when you're talking with candidates or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it almost breaks the ice in a way, right? Right. Like, like I'm a real person, this is like my real life. And you know, right. it ends up some, some more casual convers get to know you conversation versus some more like behavioral or case study type interview, you know, can kind of break the ice that way and you can get yeah. to know a bit more um and also it's it's a chance to also show that you are you know cool calm and collected so let's say you know you do have an inter you do or you do have an interview you have a bad internet connection you have to pivot to you know refreshing your computer or hopping on a phone call instead right not being phased by that and you know keeping confident if you know your dog does bark in the background and just continue on like normal can really show um you know kind of just how collected you are i think that's yeah. not a bit that could come out of it yeah, that's great. Um, so my next question is, and I might we might need to explain what this is to students, but um, does EY use um, pre-recorded or do they just use like Zoom or WebEx or what is the platform, I guess, with or great how question. Do, yeah. We use two uh, two types. So we use both pre-recorded video interviews and what we call live video interviews. Okay. 
So we use a tool called, or a software called Yellow, um, and both our pre-recorded and live video interviews are through Yellow. So in the pre-recorded, you're essentially recording yourself answering about five questions um, that then get sent to our professionals who would, and the folks who review them, you know, those professionals are the people who would be interviewing you, um, like in an on-campus or in-office scenario. And similarly, we use Yellow for live video interviews, and those are just like, you know, Skype or Zoom, just like we're doing now. Yeah. Okay, great. I was going to ask, you know, what advice you had for students doing virtual interviews, but I think for the most part, you touched upon it with, you know, you would treat it the same way that you would um, a live interview. Is, is there, do you have any other advice that you, um, that you would want to give, you know, to students who are going to have to do virtual interviews? Yes, my, my biggest piece of advice is just to practice, and, and the beauty is it's truly the easiest thing to practice right now. So for example, for the pre-recorded video interview, most of us have, you know, hopefully a laptop or, or a tablet, or even you can use your phone. Google behavioral interview questions, pick five, you know, have a list in front of you, highlight one, give yourself a minute or two to think about it, go to your laptop, press play, and record yourself answering in a couple minutes. Watch it back, see how you do. You know, did you have, were you moving your hands around a lot and that was distracting? Or, um, you know, did it take you a while to get into it? So maybe that's a question that you need to kind of think more on if it may be one, you know, in your interview, you've got, I'm gonna get that, you know, leadership or team example kind of locked down. Um, so I, especially for the pre-recorded video interview, super easy to practice. Google behavioral interview questions, practice on, you know, your camera, um, on your phone, on your laptop, on your tablet, whatever, uh, watch it back and see how you do. And same with live video interviews. And I mean, especially if you have a friend, you know, in your classes who will be going through a similar, uh, you know, interview process, use them, right? Have, have each other, you know, Skype from your apartment, see how the internet works, have, you know, take turns Googling, you know, behavioral interview questions and asking the other one, um, you know, one of those questions and asking for feedback as well. And so, because, you know, just like anything else, the more you do it, the more comfortable you're get, you get, you'll get. So if you haven't done a video interview before, get with a friend, practice with them, um, and you'll get more comfortable as you, as you practice. Yeah, that's great. And that's a good, great piece of advice is, you know, you can record yourself first and see how it looks. And um, just a plug for the services in our office when we do, we can obviously do virtual mock interviews and mm -hmm. we're happy to record those so you can see the feedback that we're giving. So if we feel like you're using your hands too much, you can actually see what that looks like opposed to you know, doing a live mock interview where you wouldn't necessarily have the option to record. Yeah, that's great. It definitely, yeah. you know, students should be taking advantage of those if they're yeah. um, The last question I had was um, the likelihood, obviously, of students being able to step foot into an office to do office interviews and to learn more about the culture um, of, of that office is pretty slim in the near future. Um, so do you have advice on questions students could ask to at least get a feel for the company and culture so they make a, a well-formed, um, informed decision? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a great one. And I think, you know, one thing that, you know, students always tell me if, if they ask for advice or things like that prior to any interview is that, um, you know, don't take that portion where the professionals ask you, do you have any questions for me? Don't take that lightly. That's a real spot for you yourself um, from one of your peers who's interviewing for the same position is to have some really insightful, well thought out questions. Um, and so I, I'm, I was really excited you asked me this question, Aaron, because um, I just think it's a great opportunity for students to kind of take advantage of. Um, I think, you know, obviously right now COVID-19 top of mind, um, you know, if you do have an interview, asking, you know, the company or firm that you're interviewing with, what have they done in this situation? How they've handled it and how, what effect has that had on you as an employee, the interviewer as an employee? Um, or even more generally, you know, it, obviously, you know, the culture of the company you work for is going to be so important. So you could just in general ask, you know, how has your, you know, you know, without getting into something too personal, how has your company or your firm supported you at, at a time in your life when you needed mm -hmm. it? I think that's a great question to ask. You can learn about maybe some services that are available that weren't included in maybe just kind of a general recruiting material. Um, and you can kind of just get it a little bit in deeper of how that firms or company supports its employees. Um, and then also just honing in on things that are important to you. So for example, something that's really important to me is um, sustainability and being green. And so, you know, not only is this a chance for you to ask about that in that company, but also is like kind of like a double chance for you to impress them by yeah. doing 
research ahead of time. You know, go online and say, hey, I read online, you know, EY um, was the first of the big four firms to, you know, go, go carbon or, you know, set a date to go carbon neutral. I swear this is not an EY plug right now, but just an example. <laughs> And say, you know, talk to me a little about that. How are you seeing that manifesting itself, you know, in your day-to-day -day work or what other, you know, initiatives does EY have around going green that you could tell me about? Because that's something that's super important to me. Um, similarly, you know, community engagement, volunteer opportunities, you know, how is how has your company changed since you started, right? So if there's someone who's been there 20 years and they're like, you know, not much has changed. Maybe you're like, all right, that may not be a company that's, you know, valuing innovation and, and, and changes in technology. That's not the spot for me. Or maybe you're like, love it, let's go. Um, so, you know, picking up on those things that are important to you in a company, doing some research is going to be huge. You can kind of reference those things that you found and then ask, you know, how that, you know, global corporate, um, you know, strategy or, you know, you know, nationwide strategy manifests itself at, you know, the location where you're applying for um, or, or just in general. And, you know, my, the last one that I would say is, you know, a lot of the culture is informed by the people who are part of this organization. And so I would take that, you know, time to ask about, you know, I'd lo love to hear more about your mentors at the company, you know, how did you find them and what impact had they had on you? And that can also mm -hmm. show you how deep the connections go. Um, you know, was it across, you know, areas? Was it someone in accounting? Was someone in marketing? Was it someone yeah. who, you know, was five years your senior, you know, 10 or younger than you, right? So I, I think those are some great questions to really get a feel for what the companies are doing, what the firms are doing, and then also the people that work there. Um, so those are those are three that I would really uh, highlight. Yeah, no, those are great, Abby. And I didn't really, I mean, it makes total sense, but really utilize the time that we're in right now with how yeah. like and with how companies are responding to COVID nineteen and how they're continuing to support their employees during this time. I think that's a huge indicator um you know for how they'll treat you in the future if you have a crisis that comes up personally um absolutely as well so i that's that's an awesome question i wouldn't have even thought of that so thank you yeah, for, yeah for you're welcome up. yeah um those were all the questions that i wanted to ask is there anything any pieces of advice or anything else that you wanted to add that i didn't have a chance to touch upon nothing to add i covered most of what i you know was hoping to say yeah. to that but really just want to, you know, don't be afraid of these virtual interviews. And I think, you know, practicing just gets you more comfortable with anything. So I yeah. would really encourage you to do that if you have one coming up and you're, you're a little nervous about it. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Abby. Thank you. Yep. Yeah.